quality education through outcome based education our topic is computing attainment of course outcomes and program outcomes as part of this session the outline what we are going to cover first we will see copo mapping and assessment process followed by course outcomes attainment and program outcomes attainment let us move to the first one copo mapping and assessment process as we are all aware we are having 12 graduate attributes which are called as program outcome here just see the glance po1 engineering knowledge po2 problem analysis po3 design and development of solutions po4 conduct investigations of complex problems po5 modern tool uses po6 the engineer and society po7 environment and sustainability po8 ethics po9 individual and teamwork po10 communication po11 project management and finance finally po12 lifelong learning for every course we have to map with all these po 1 to 12 based on the level of mapping okay let us take one sample course this is related to one computer science formal language and automata theme let us assume the course code ts404 es so for every course we have to define course outcome using the action verbs based on bloom's taxonomy for this course let us see here six co's are defined so the co names are numbered based on the course code followed by co number in sequential order so the first co understand the concept of abstract machines and their power to recognize the long ways second one employ finite state machine for modeling and solving computing problems then third one design context free grammars for formal languages fourth one knowledge and converting context free grammars into push down automata etc co5 understand the power of the turing mission co6 distinguish between decidability and decidable so the co's how to formulate the procedure everything earlier you already aware okay directly we will come to our computation part so here now we have seen the pos now we have seen one sample course cos then how to map these cos to po 1 to 12 first what you have to do let us see this table again i have listed all that six cos what we mentioned then first you can list out the related pos of each and every co then next level we will formulate the articulation matrix with level of mapping here first related pos all are listed po1 the related pos are 1 2 3 that means po1 po2 po3 po10 po12 then co2 1 2 3 4 5 10 and 12 po3 1 2 3 4 5 10 and 12 po4 1 2 3 4 5 10 and 12 po5 also same po6 1 2 10 and 12 so now uh, let us see for example co1 understand the concept of abstract machine and their power to recognize the languages so how this is related to po 1 2 3 10 and 12 let us check one so what is po1 so po1 is engineering knowledge so here engineering elements apply mathematical knowledge also uh, available here you can see the first is you understand the concept of abstract missions and their power to recognize so this is actually computation computation mathematical model so how the computer is functioning inside the computation based on this concept abstract mission and every abstract model having its power to recognize accept it so compulsory here engineering knowledge mathematical knowledge is required that's why co1 is related to PO1. Then coming to PO2, problem analysis. Again, here mathematical 
engineering knowledge is involved compulsory you have to analyze analyze the problem that's why po2 is also related then coming to po3 so po3 is design and development of solutions whenever wherever we are having a problem then uh, you have to provide a solution or develop solution to solve that particular problem so that's why po3 is also related then uh, coming to po10 how it is related to po10 so what is po10 actually communication so actually whatever we are doing compulsory we have to communicate so without communication we can't do anything that's why it is related to communication also then finally 12th one that is lifelong learning so with this subject actually this subject is very uh, important for uh, higher education like gate so that's why with uh, using whatever they studied with advancement uh, that will be continued uh, throughout their career whenever they will pursue their higher studies etc like like that's why it is lifelong it is required even uh, any computer science you can take this is the fundamental core subject mandatory subject that's why lifelong learning is also related so like that every co you can correlate with uh, related pos so then here just we listed the related pos only but what is the level of uh, correlation that we will see that we will call it as co po articulation matrix or simply co po matrix the next one here you can see the matrix table co po matrix so here the co's 1 to 6 are listed then po's 1 to 12 are listed here you can see whatever the correlation we mentioned the related pivot for example let us see co1 co1 related to po 1 2 3 10 12 only at 1 2 3 10 and 12 only we have to map others are not related simply you can put blank or hyphen let us see 1 2 3 co1 mapped with po1 po2 po3 1 2 3 after that 10 and 12 see 10 and 12 remaining all are blank so in any mapping table the values are filled with the following four combinations so if a particular co is mapping to a particular po with a high level also called a substantial we can put its level as three if the mapping level is medium or moderate we can put level as two if the mapping is low or slight you can put the level as one if a particular co not at all related to any few for that what you have to do simply you can put single i5 meaning is none only as per the abet washington accord even our ob nba guidelines these values only we have to use earlier in the old format before OBE so at that time they used the key, uh, phrases starting letter high h high h s yes, uh, substantial medium m like that uh, phrases are the starting letter now uh, from the OBE onwards now the levels are uh, with combination of one two three iphone only we have to use why because we have to compute for computation numerical values directly you can take based on this level okay now here you can see uh, again you can see one co the levels let us understand clearly co1 related to po1 why it is two why not it is three why not it is one so let, let us go back to co1 understand the concept of abstract mission and their power to recognize the long way so actually what is po1 engineering knowledge that means here for this not only 100 percent engineering or mathematical knowledge only some extent some extent mathematical but not too low also moderately some medium level mathematical concepts are required to understand this co that's why we have given the level as two similarly uh, some medium level mathematical knowledge is required for that we have to do the analysis problem analysis po2 that's why for this also the level is two then uh, design or development of solution here 
there is no much practical involvement here so theoretically once the problem is identified you may provide some solutions that's why it is not uh, up to the extent just a little bit that's why it is slight so we are making it as level one then communication also here 100 uh, percent communication is not required at least slightly some somewhat communication is required that's why po 10 is one the lifelong learning also only one aspect for higher education purpose even in our india whenever if you want to do m tech or me in iits and it is or uh, universities or in affiliated college through gate exam so for that this subject uh, having uh, somewhat uh, weighted that's why for that it is uh, required for ug2 pg but not uh, all all extent like that every co related POs, you have to assess the mapping levels combination of these values okay after completion of all the COs, POs mapping levels what you have to do you can calculate uh, average of each PO, average of each PO. That we will call it as weighted average. So, uh, where this average is useful, later we will see during our computation. Here you can see PO1 average is 2.67, PO2 2.67, PO3 2, and so on. So, the related POs, weighted average values are calculated. So, sometimes, uh, you may get one question the justification of this uh, COPO mapping why it is uh, one why it is two why it is three why it is uh, not mapping so we have to justify for example below i have mentioned one justification co5 let us say co5 highly correlated to po2 so here you can see co5 under po2 it is three even one also three let us take one sample co5 under PO2, its mapping level is three highly. So why? Why, why? why means here you can see go back once to the CO5. Understand the power of the Turing machine as an abstract automaton, which describes computation effectively and efficiently. This is actually one model, model of computation, Turing machine, which is the powerful model among all the models exist in the computational intelligence. So, CO5 highly correlated to PO2 as it needs the mathematical analysis for Turing machine. Why? Because completely a mathematical analysis is required for understanding the model of Turing machine. That's why it is highly correlated. That's why its level is thin. Like that, you have to justify whether it is high or medium or low or even not mapping also. This is CO5 matrix. So, then next, what you have to do already all of our courses in an academic year in an regulation or in a particular batch program level mapping can be done so earlier so here the program level course and PO matrix for all the courses just i have taken sample so what is our course what we have taken the sample cs 400 that is formal language and automated thing for that course the program level mapping levels are shown here so whatever the associated POs, only those POs levels are included even any course the same manner so here you can see uh, the course earlier see uh, all the COs are combined now here we are talking about program level means we will take only the course course followed by the program level mapping value actually we are having weighted average that weighted average value rounded value so higher higher values will be taken here you can see uh, this is 3 po1 po23 then 2 to 1 then uh, 10 is 1 12 is 2 okay so our weighted average then these program level mapping levels these two values further uh, for computation purpose we will use we'll see where this will be useful so this is the program level course wise PO mapping with their level here only sample I have taken to showcase our sample codes okay now coming to assessment process for course outcomes so just we already mentioned course outcomes were prepared by the action verbs of Bloom's taxonomy all the course outcomes 
which are prepared in such a way that they are measurable by means of written and oral skills, assignments, presentations, etc. The assessment or attainment of course outcome is divided into two ways. So one is direct assessment or direct attainment. The second one is indirect assessment or indirect attainment. Let us see about all these two. Okay, here, what are the assessment tools related to CO direct assessment or direct attainment and their target level? So how to set the target levels of a particular course based on a particular assessment tool that is based on your regulation, internal evaluation, external evaluation, then based on the core committees or course expert groups or a department level committee, whatever, whatever the names you will call. So by sitting, uh, whoever the faculty teaching through a particular course, maybe two to three combination all together, we have to identify the target level. So first you can see the last three batches, actually NBA accreditation, they will see three years assessment data, completed years, not running year. For example, now we are in 23-24 means three completed assessment years means 22, 23, 21, 22, 2021. These three completed assessment year, you can take the completed graduated batch results, batch wise. So that is 23 pass out, 22 pass out, 21 pass out. Particular course, you can see the average. So average of the three years average. So based on that, what is the minimum value you are getting? So with that, maybe some increment level should be increased. Like that, we have to set uh, the target level. So year to year, suppose this year you set some target level is X. Next year also the same level. Next year also the same level means you didn't put any efforts for the improvement. That means action taken are not proper. So whatever the target level you are increasing compulsory, our target, our goal is how to achieve. We have to achieve our target. Like that year to year, target, continuous improvement is there. Otherwise, continuous improvement is not there. That means there is fault with us. Like so for example, here I have taken one sample, university regulations. They are having midterm exam with uh, 25 weighted, then end semester exam 75, 100 mark. University, university, the evaluation guidelines are various. This is one sample. So the midterm exam again consisting of three components. One is the descriptive test. The second one is objective test. The third one is assignment. So descriptive test consisting of 10 marks. Objective test consisting of uh, 10 marks, assignment consisting of 5. 10 plus 10 plus 5. So total 25 marks. Then external exam 75. That is based on end semester question paper. Okay, here the threshold value, just now whatever we mentioned, by seeing the average of the internal marks of that particular subject, by seeing the previous three batches average. So threshold value, suppose here for this minimum, I'm getting 60 percentage. So your minimum 60 percentage, how many of you reached this 60 percentage threshold value? Based on that, again, you can fix the levels. For example, the first one. So in our class, maybe 60 or 120 or whatever the student count, 80 percentage of students. So who has reached this threshold value? That means 60 percentage. For example, 80% uh, of students scoring more than 60% of 25 marks, that is 14 marks out of maximum 25. So then that is the your highest level. Let us assume highest level is 3. Then next you can take the scale, scaling based on the range with the standardized norms. Then suppose 70% of students who scored more than 60% out of 25, 
its level is 2 then uh, 60 percentage of students who scores so more than 60 percentage of the threshold then level is 1 you can't set level for uh, not related that is i1 only we know 1 2 3 only combination only you have to set like that for every component you have to set the target level based on the threshold value similarly for end exam external exam weightage is 75 so external exam you can see the result pass percentage for the last two to three batches average you can consider for example here also so in this subject 60 percentage average is there so 60 percent of students who score the pass marks in external exam then it you can make it as level three earlier you can see internal the level three is 80 percent here level three is 60 percent so internal having more scope but external so there is less scope uh, the pass percentage so here 60 percent is the highest level then 50 percent is next level 40 percent is the minimum pass criteria so level one like that every component in our curriculum we have to set threshold value followed by the attainment level like this so this is uh, one theory subject uh, internal evaluation external evaluation similarly for lab internal and external similarly for if you are having mini project or minor project or industry oriented or project part one part two, whatever the name for that also uh, you can set the levels similarly uh, some may having uh, internal external technical seminar whatever the components in our curriculum of that particular batch for all we have to set the threshold value followed by the attainment level in our curriculum whatever the courses including theory practicals non-credit course a project seminar conference way whatever everything should be included in the process of attainment so even see technical seminar conference way like that okay now what is the data required for computation of course outcome of a particular course if you can see the direct attainment so direct attainment if you can see the theory course but theory course internal marks so internal marks again based on your question paper pattern if it is objective you can take the total marks if it is a descriptive question wise marks you can take based on the CO's. if it is external exam see affiliated colleges there is no scope of getting question wise marks in end exam that's why there we are considering only the final marks what are the marks released by the university some autonomous colleges they have they are having provision of for knowing question wise marks also so if you have question wise marks provision you can follow the same method whatever the method we will see for the descriptive test question wise mapping same process you can apply for external marks also whoever not having provision of uh, having question wise marks you are having only total marks uh, at that time uh, in this process whatever i am going to explain you can follow this that is for theory course if it is a laboratory practical course internal marks external marks if it is seminar or project or conference or whatever internal external some components may not have external at that time you can consider only internal so for direct attainment uh, component wise theory course wise practical course wise other components yeah, these are all the data requirements okay uh, for uh, indirect attainment that is based on feedback before that uh, let us see by taking one sample yeah this is one or uh, sample mark sheet of uh, descriptive test based on question wise co mapping here question paper i didn't include it so here you can able to see question number in bracket weighted then below mapped co's are listed here yeah the descriptive test consisting of uh, with weighted 10 marks so it has four questions so uh, answer any two questions each question carries five the so best of uh, two will be considered that, that can be calculated for a total 10 marks weighted for example here i have taken some sample data of 14 records some roll number one so he attempted question number one then question number four only two questions are attempted then he secured 
4 and 3. Total 7 marks. The question number 1 mapped with CO1. Question number 2 mapped with CO2. Here question number 3 also. Question number 4 mapped with CO2. That depends on the unit wise CO. What are the topics you are giving for class test 1 or class test 2. So based on the questions you have to balance the question wise CO mapping also. In the regulations some of the institutions some of the universities clearly mentioned so uh, for co1 what is the weightage co2 what is the weightage like that based on that whatever the process you are following so you can um, prepare this sheet so for example here uh, student wise attempted questions and uh, they secured marks and total marks so this data is required for calculation of uh, direct attainment of a particular course uh, in case of descriptive assessment tool or class test whatever we'll call similarly the other component is uh, here in this example what we have considered for theory course we are having three components for internal descriptive plus objective plus assignment descriptive we have seen for 10 marks one sample question paper mark sheet then objective assignment so objective and assignment here i have taken combination why because Objective, multiple choice, uh, so you can take the total mark. Assignment uh, also, maybe it is uh, some uh, universities they may follow by giving one case study or small mini project type. You may get only one question. Some people may follow uh, objective or some may follow questions also. We don't have uniformity actually. So, like uh, descriptive test, this number of questions are fixed, but assignment there is no uniformity. So if you have uniformity mechanism, you can take question wise also no problem. So in this case, I have taken uh, uh, overall marks of assignment uh, with weightage 5. Then for object test, test total 10 plus 5, 15. So that uh, total 15 marks I have taken. That mark sheet I have taken for uh, class test 1 and class test 2. Then for end semester exam also, just now I mentioned, this is the data related to affiliated university. Here, uh, we can't get a question wise mark. That's why we have taken only the external marks that to uh, whatever the mark they secured grade and grade points. So here, this is the external marks. Okay, now with this, now we will see the calculation part. Before that, now coming to indirect attainment. So here we are discussing about attainment of a particular course. For a particular course, direct attainment. Indirect attainment. What direct attainment contains? Direct attainment again consisting of two components. One is internal evaluation, another one external evaluation. Whereas indirect attainment that, that is based on the end semester feedback or course and survey, whatever. So for all the courses, the indirect attainment feedback is required. If it is theory or practical, seminar or project work or conference by OS extra, whatever. Okay, let us see one sample. Here I, I made Google form for a particular course, whatever the course we are discussing as an example, formal language and automated theory. For this course, all COs are listed with their attainment level. This we have to circulate to the students based on their outcomes so they can answer their levels. So based on the levels, again, we have to calculate uh, the indirect attainment. So, for example, this course CO1, CO2, total six CO's we have seen. So, this is the Google form or whatever the mechanism, whatever the uh, software you are having. You can uh, include the CO's, CO wise, uh, the levels of mapping. Then you can take more responses. So, more users may, may involve it. So, then we have a scope of uh, doing effective attainment of uh, that particular course. Okay, now, yeah, this is the list of uh, indirect attainment responses, that is end semester feedback. For example, here I have taken 30 sample records. CO wise, so for example, student one, CO one, he attempted with the level three answer. Then CO2, he answered with level 2. CO3, also 2. CO4, I think he made all as level 2. 
for example another student uh, he uh, answered with the co1 level 3 all three he opted uh, for example uh, 13 you can see for co1 uh, he answered with level 1 co2 he didn't attempt it co3 1 then uh, co5 he attempted as zero so like like that these are all the google responses that google form responses as it is we have taken so based on this further we have to calculate the indirect attainment okay uh, this is the process of computation of co attainment it's a co po mapping then assessment process now we have the data readily then our first task is how to compute co attainment Later, after computation of CO, then you can do the computation of CO. So actually, all the CO's are a subset of CO's. Directly, we can't compute CO's without CO attainment. That is the order we have to follow. After computing all the CO's attainment, then only we can do the CO's attainment. Okay, now let us see that the same course, how to do the CO attainment of that particular sample course, whatever we have considered. Okay, that particular course again uh, here you can see we mentioned we are having direct attainment, indirect attainment. Then what is the weightage? So generally this weightage depends on internal, external mass distribution. Sometimes they may consider based on that. So for example, here for that uh, CO attainment, direct attainment 90% is weightage, indirect attainment 10%. Even NBA guidelines also they have mentioned gen generically 80, 20, 70, 30, 90, 10, like that. So, for example, here direct attainment is 90% weighted, indirect attainment is 10% weighted. Direct attainment, we already mentioned what are the components we are having? We are having internal exam, external exam. Whereas indirect attainment, what we are having end semester feedback of that particular course. So for example, here in this course, the direct attainment assessment tools are, we are having two internal examinations. We may call it as CIE 1 or MID 1 with 25 marks. So we already mentioned that uh, internal, again, it is uh, consisting of three components, objective, assignment, descriptive. These are the weightages. So even the same thing for uh, class test 2 also. Then end semester exam, 75 marks. These are the assessment tools for direct attainment of a particular theory course. Then indirect attainment course end semester feedback. Okay, with this assessment type, with this weighted, let us see the formulas for calculation of CO attainment, of direct attainment and indirect attainment. Okay, this is the formula for computation of overall CO attainment of the particular course. Here, what we have taken the direct attainment 90% is indirect attainment 10%. Then, overall attainment of the particular course is that 90% plus 10%. Together, we have to take. So, 90% is of direct CO attainment plus 10% is of indirect CO attainment. So this is the overall formula for uh, computing CO attainment of a particular course. Okay, similarly, again, the direct attainment separately we have to compute. Indirect attainment separately we have to compute. Now let us come to computation of direct CO attainment of the particular course. So here we have already seen, again, direct attainment we are having internal, external. Internal we are having less weighted, external we are having more weighted. For example, th this I have taken based on the university pattern, internal 20, external 80. Maybe other some regulations 25, 75, 30, 70, 40, 60. Based on that internal external distribution, you can take the weightages. For example, here in this 20 percentage of internal examination attainment and 80 percentage of end semester examination attainment. So separately, we have to calculate internal examination attainment, then end semester examination attainment. Then we can take these percentages of weightages. Now let us see CO attainment uh, 
the calculation formulas based on the component wise. So this table shows course outcome, course outcome attainment level for the internal exam, course outcome attainment level for the end exam, then uh, direct attainment, indirect attainment, then overall attainment. All the computations, the calculations are included in this step. So first for internal, what you are having mid one, mid two, then two assignments you are having. So again, midwise, what we are having objective, descriptive. Then uh, university examination, let us assume this is level is B1, internal level is A1. Then see what direct attainment, how to calculate. Go back and check the direct attainment formula. Here you can see 20% is of internal plus 80% of external examination. Now 0.2 into internal plus 0.8 into external attainment value. Now you can see same thing is mentioned here. So C1 direct attainment, let us assume C1 equal to 0 0.2 into A1. A1 is the internal attainment plus 0 0.8, that is 80% is the external, into B1. B1 is the external examination attainment. This is the CO direct attainment. Then how to compute indirect attainment of a particular course? Indirect attainment we have seen on the feedback form responses. Go back and check once. Here you can see. This is the sample responses of the course and semester feedback of that particular course for all the students who were participated. So here CO wise, CO wise, whatever the levels, you can take the number of attempted levels of a particular, suppose level two, how many are attempted? Level three, how many are attempted? Level one, how many are attempted? Like uh, every CO, you can uh, assume this count value, calculate this count value. Based on that, the formula is different here. Let us see. So, indirect attainment uh, is computed like this. Here, the formula is 1 into x plus 2 into y plus 3 into z whole divided by x plus y plus z. Here you can see what is x. x is nothing but number of students who opted for the level 1 y equal to number of students who opted for the level 2 z equal to the number of students who opted for level 3 so now out of the 30 responses or 40 or 60 responses of your particular class in your particular course you can find the count then those values we can substitute here so why you have given 1 in 2 so 1 in 2 that means the level 1 how many students attempted level 1? 1 into, for example, 10 plus level 2 into how many students attempted for level 2? Two? 2 into, so, suppose, or 10 or 30 plus level 3 into how many students attempted with that level 3 of the particular. This is CO wise, we have to calculate. This formula you can apply for each and every CO. So then finally, overall divided by so the students attempted for level 1 plus the number of students attempted for level 2 plus the students attempted for level 3. So by using this formula, you will get uh, indirect attainment of a particular course. So now you have CO direct attainment value, you have CO indirect attainment value. Then how to compute overall attainment of that particular course? Here again we have the formula, overall CO attainment of the course, here what we have assumed 90% is direct attainment. Then 10% is indirect attainment. Then 0.9 into direct attainment value plus 0.1 into indirect attainment value. That is the overall CO attainment of the particular course. Now you can see 0.9 into C1. What is C1 here? Direct attainment value plus 0.1 into D1. What is D1 here? Indirect attainment value. So like that, first we have to do internal evaluation, attainment value calculation separately. Then uh, end examination attainment calculation, then CO direct attainment based on this two, then indirect attainment based on the uh, responses of the feedback, then finally overall attainment with combination of direct attainment and indirect attainment. This is the computation process of a particular course, CO attainment calculation formulas. Okay, uh, now the target levels again here, whatever we discussed earlier, the same uh, is listed here. 
you attend my target out this we already mentioned based on your component y now directly come to our calculation part okay again the formulas are reviewed here now you can see now first you can see the descriptive test or class test which is in the form of question wise so here earlier we have shown the question wise uh, sample mark sheet so with that sheet the calculation part uh, is shown here so here uh, here in a particular class 60 students descriptive test question wise marks are there so now as per the descriptive test go back once and uh, check the target levels one here you can see this is the descriptive test weightage is 10 marks so the level one when it is level one means 60 to 79 percentage of students who scores more than three marks that question wise why it is three marks means so the total uh, maximum marks of the particular question is five so 60 percentage minimum 60 of percentage of five is three out of five marks so for this we are making it as level one then uh, next range higher level 80 to 90 percentage who scores more than three marks in a particular question then level is two then uh, more than 90 percentage whoever scored with this threshold value marks then the level is so these levels are not fixed that depends on your university regulation your course coordinator whatever see one common point you can remember for the attainment process it may be a direct or indirect or co or po you don't have any uniformity mechanism you can see any videos any sessions even through nba workshops also you can go through so that depends on our internal process how you are justifying that is important whatever you are defining justification is required okay now that's why these are all only samples don't stick on to this value with this sample you can customize it as per your requirement okay this is the mid exam descriptive test uh, target level now come to that mark sheet here you can see so here all the 60 student marks only samples i have added so how many students attempted question one out of 60 in a class so only 10 students are attempted question two four students only question three three students only and so on like that okay now we were attempted question one out of these let us see number of students who scored or secured the minimum threshold mark so greater than threshold marks here what we assumed 60 percentage of respective question wise mark that is three so greater than three how many students secured so let us see here here what we set that level 60 to 70 percentage suppose 60 to 70 percent of students scored greater than three level one 80 to 89 percentage of students who scored greater than three level two then 90 above percentage whoever scored greater than three that is level three now here you can see what is the level we will get here so uh, for this co one question one number of students secured greater than threshold mark that is 60 percentage very greater than three only eight students so here uh, here i have added only whoever secured greater than three combination so eight students are there then uh, you can see the percentage so attempted 10 secured 8 so 8 by 10 so what is the percentage you will get 80 percentage with this 80 percentage what is the level you will get as per our set levels so here you can see 80 to 90 percentage of students who scored more than three marks that particular question now the level is two so you can use this level here now here you can see the level is two like that for all questions you can calculate the attainment level similarly co2 co2 here you can see four students attempted four students secured greater than three so 100 percent 100 percent is what is the level here so here greater than or equal to 90 percent so this is the highest level three that's why here we have added three then for a co3 here the percentage we are getting 66.6 now 66 percentage here see 
60 to 79 range it is what is the level here one so now yes it is the level one co3 so here again co1 is repeated so for this you are getting 100 percentage 90 above three so wherever any co is repeated more than one for different questions but co is same then you can take average of uh, that common co value here co1 we are getting two again co1 you are getting three average is two plus three by two two questions 2.5 co2 only one time co3 only one time so rarely uh, this will happen okay now finally question one see that co1 what is the overall attainment 2.5 for the descriptive test for co2 the attainment level is three for co3 the attainment level is one so descriptive test is over the same process you can apply for assignment if you are following question wise even for end exam if you are having question wise mark the same process you have to follow then coming to the next component of internal evaluation is what is the next component so that is assignment plus object to test combination here i have taken the combination similarly you can do for descriptive test also then coming to that objective test assignment and external so here you can see objective plus assignment total marks are taken then end exam marks total taken if you are having question wise the same process as used in descriptive test you can follow so now here objective plus assignment uh, go and check the levels what you said objective plus assignment together i have taken 60 to 70 percent 79 students who scores more than nine marks with combination that is 10 plus by 15 so more than nine level is one 80 to 89 percentage of students who scores greater than nine level two then 90 percent is above students who scores greater than nine level three now uh, based on this what is the percentage you are getting let us check here you can see the mid one 49 students attempted how many students secured greater than the threshold value so here 33 33 by 49 you are getting 67.34 67.34 what is the range what is the level you will get here you can see 60 to 79 so the level is one here you can see the level is one similarly for mid to two 49 students attempted 38 students scored greater than the threshold value 38 by 49 we are getting 77.55 again it is in the range of 62 what we said 60 to 79 so 60 to 79 again it is level one only so like that uh, other components uh, attainment values you can calculate based on the total mark for end exam i already mentioned i am having only total marks i don't have question wise marks so here i have taken uh, total attempted students for the end exam 49 out of 49 uh, how many students secured the greater than threshold value end exam you can see end exam target levels here you can see 50 percent of students who scores the pass marks in the end exam level one 60 percent of students you will get level two 70 percent of students and above you will get level three here what is the average you are getting for your end exam end exam you are getting 61.22 so 61.22 what is its level 61 means this is level two less than 70 greater than 60 comes under uh, this one so level two you will get here for end exam here you can see level two so now with this earlier we mentioned the computation table there you can use all these values for direct attainment this is the table of uh, computation of direct attainment of the sample course whatever you have considered so here you can see component wise you can take first co wise you can take the related component suppose here in this uh, assessment pattern co one two three related to internal exam one co four five six related to internal exam two but for end exam here we don't have question wise mark that's why uh, overall we have taken by taking the overall marks of the end exam that means all COs are related 
we don't have split here that's why for uh, every receiver the end exam level is common once you can calculate suppose here end exam level is 2 for all receivers same level only you have to take whatever the level you will get then for co1 it is related to mid one so mid one we are having objective one plus assignment one its level is one descriptive one its level is 2.5 go back and check these values where we have taken co1 mid one here you can see co1 this is co1 mid one for descriptive level is 2 uh, 2.5 remember this value for uh, combination objective plus assignment the level is 1 then uh, end exam the level is 2 2.5 1 2 so here you can see descriptive 2.5 objective assignment 1 then uh, end exam is 2 so all the internal components average you can take for that particular pure related 1 plus 2.5 by 2 2 components you will get 1.75 end exam is 2 then uh, how to calculate uh, keyword attainment direct attainment the formula what we have used earlier 20 percent is of internal attainment plus 80 percent is of end examination attainment 0.2 into internal value is 1.75 0.2 into 1.75 plus 0.8 into 2 so if you have calculus you can calculate you will get this value 1.95 for co1 similarly for co2 CO3, CO4, like that. Like that, you can calculate the direct CO attainment. These are all direct CO attainment values. So, after uh, direct CO attainment value, what we have to do? We have to calculate the indirect attainment. Indirect attainment formula also we have seen. Let us calculate the indirect attainment, then go for overall attainment of that particular course. Now, you can see this is the computation of CO indirect attainment of the particular course. This is the formula. So already in that in the table, master table we already mentioned one uh, into x plus two into y plus three into z whole divided by x plus y plus z. The same only uh, given in a sentence format. Level one into number of students attempted plus level two into number of students attempted plus level three into number of students attempted whole divided by total number of students. X plus y plus z is also total or total participants you can take. Now here you can see the calculation part. Let us see here. Students answer level one, CO wise, CO one, level one, two attempted. Then CO two, one with level one. CO three, two attempted with level one. CO four, one with level one. CO five, one with level one. CO six, one with level one. Similarly, uh, with uh, level two, twelve students attempted for CO one. Uh, 12 for CO2, 11 for CO3, and so on. Then for level 3, CO1, 19 students attempted, CO2, 20, and so on. Then total students participated in this sample, 33. Now you can see the calculation. Uh, if you have uh, calculation, what you can do? Here you can see level 1, 1 into how many students attempted? 1 into 2 plus 2 into how many attempted? 2, 12. 2 into 12 plus how many attempted level 3? 3 into 19. 1 into 2 plus 2 into 12 plus 3 into 19. Whole divided by x plus y plus z or total also. Same, 33. So then you will get the overall attainment level is 2.52 for CO1 of that particular course in indirect attainment. Like that, every CO, you can find the indirect attainment value. Now, earlier we are having direct attainment value, overall uh, direct attainment value. Now, here we are having indirect attainment value. Then, how to compute the overall CO attainment of the particular course? What we have mentioned, 90% is direct attainment, 10% is indirect attainment in this sample, what we assume. Now, 0.9 into the direct attainment value plus 0.1 into this indirect attainment value. Again, you can see. For calculation part, again, you can list uh, whatever the final values required. The CO overall attainment equal to 90 percent is of direct CO attainment plus 10 percent is of indirect CO attainment. Again, you can list all the values here. CO was direct attainment value, then indirect attainment values. Then substitute in this formula, for example, CO1, 
direct attainment will use 1.95, indirect attainment will use 2.5. So 0.9 into 1.95 plus 0.1 into 2.5, we will get 2.01. For CO1, the overall attainment in that particular course. Then similarly, CO2, CO3, and so on. So individual CO wise overall attainment values are obtained now. Then what you have to do? You can take the course, that particular course attainment. So individual CO wise, this okay, but overall course wise, what you have to do? You have to take the average of all the individual CO attainment values. The total six CO's are there. Average sum of all these values divided by six. You will get 1.95. This 1.95 value, uh, where we have to see in our program level course wise PO mapping, there you can keep this value. So, this is the final attainment value of the course, whatever we have taken formal language and automated theory. Like every course, as the individual faculty, suppose this is your course, up to this you have to carry out. Suppose other section also handling by the other faculty, that faculty also has to do, then you have to combine the both classes data values, the attainment values. Or consolidatedly, you can take all student samples, then you can calculate like that. Okay, and now direct at, uh, I mean, CO overall attainment is over. With this, what you have to do, earlier you mentioned first computation of CO. Then we have to compute PO attainment. So here PO also for that particular program we have to do. I mean, for our course, we have to do PO attainment. But overall program, suppose your program is B or B Tech, ESC or IT, whatever. For that particular program, attainment is again different. For every individual course, after obtaining all individual course POs, then you have to do overall PO attainment by considering all the courses. That also I will explain here. Okay, uh, now you you got some attainment values of your particular course. So with these values, suppose earlier your target levels, let us see your target levels. Target levels means your program level, you are having some values. Let us go back and check. For example, here, program level one table we have seen. Here you can see the so particular course program level PO1, its mapping level is 3. Then PO2, 3. Let us zoom. Let us say example 1, 2, 8, 3, 3. So this is program level actually PO. Similarly, for COs also, you can see the attric uh, that uh, articulation matrix, the weighted average. Here you can see PO1, 2.67. 2.67 like that. Similarly, even CO wise also, you can fix some target level based on that. What is your attain level? So your target is actually our 100% target means level three, but here we didn't attain level three. Then whatever the level you attain, how to improve that level in further? For that, you have to propose action plan or action taken for example co1 the attainment value is 2.01 but this is not 100 percent 100 percent is three so in this particular co that is related to unit one let us assume if it is a theory or if it is a problem based if it is a practical based let us assume if it is practical based more experiments needs to be conducted if it is problem based more problems needs to be solved. For example, here bridge, bridge classes or remedial classes for that particular CO related unit or chapter, or you have to do the assignments with uh, some critical topics. Then you have to provide solutions to the university previous questions for that particular unit. So like that, some action plan we have to propose CO wise. So even the same action plan, PO is also we have to cover finally after uh, attaining POs. So like that here you can see for all the courses of the program, 
offered by the particular department. For example, this one particular department, BTEC, first semester, second semester, then till eighth semester, all courses, their overall CO autonomy values are listed here. So our sample course, what we have considered this is formal language and automata theory. This is the overall CO autonomy value, 1.95, whatever we have seen. With this, now how to do the PO autonomy value? Now let us see. The next part is program outcomes attainment. So again, the same assessment pattern needs to be considered for programs, program outcomes attainment also. So here you have to consider first program level course wise PO matrix table. Earlier we have seen all the courses first year to uh, eighth semester. So here our course is highlighted here. Years four zero four years. These are the program level mapping levels. With these levels, here you can see we will compute the PO attainment. Computation of CO PO attainment course wise. Here you can see course wise PO's mapping. PO's and PS4's are addressed through core courses, projects, etc. A course or project, etc., meets a subset of PO's, even PS4's also to different strengths with the combination of one, two, three. So now here program level, mapping levels of the particular course. In the table, whatever we have seen, see, 3, 3, 2, 2, 1, so on, so The same values are taken here, 3, 3, 2, 2, 1, this one, program level, mapping level. Then in our COPO articulation matrix, we are having weighted average values of each and every PO. So that weighted average values are taken here. Now we can see 2.67, 2.61, and so on. If you want, you can go back and check the weighted average values. Initially, we have seen that COPO matrix. Here you can see. These are the weighted average values. Program level, mapping levels you can include. Weighted average levels you can in 2.67, 2.67, and so on. With this, how to compute PO attainment? Let us see. Okay, here we have listed program level, mapping levels of the particular course, then weighted average. PO wise of that particular course. Now, let us see. This is CO overall attainment. This we already covered. Here, the average CO attainment value is required for computation of PO attainment. That's why the table again I copied here. Here you can remember the overall average CO attainment 1.95. This value you can remember. Now, the PO assessment process also same. Again, direct assessment, indirect assessment. Like CO direct assessment, what you are having internal examination, external examination component. Indirect attainment, course and semester feedback. For FIVO level, indirect assessment tools are different. In addition to course and survey, we are having exit survey, alumni survey, employer survey. So like these are the commonly used surveys will be considered. If you are having more than one survey, then you have to take average of all the surveys the calculation part is same. Either direct attainment, indirect attainment for the particular course, whatever the process we have seen, everything is same. If more than one component is there, you can take the average. Okay, course level PO attainment, the formula is here you can take the weighted average value of PO into the CO attainment average value whole divided by 3. So why you have taken uh, denominator as 3, our 100%, our higher level is 3 only. So you, every time we can compete with 100% only. That's why our higher level is 3. So weighted average value of PO in the table here you can see. Yeah, this is weighted average, that red color, whatever represented. PO wise, these are all weighted average value of a particular PO into the CO 
overall average attainment value 1.95 this 1.95 is common for all the pivots so 2.67 into 1.95 whole divided by 3 then you will get the direct attainment value of that particular PO1. This is only direct attainment value. Again, indirect is different. Overall is different. Now you can see this is the formula. So evaluation of attainment of PO course level, direct attainment, weighted average value of PO into C attainment average, whole divided by three. Then again, the values are listed here. So here, weighted average value overall. PO attainment average value. Now see, here you can see for all POs, computation not required. Whatever the POs mapped to your particular course, only those POs we have to calculate. There are only 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, and 12. Only you have to compute attainment of only these POs. Let us see PO1. P1 is 2.67 into 1.95 whole divided by 3. Now we'll see. 2.67 into 1.95 whole divided by 3. So you are getting 1.73. Similarly, P02, P03, 4, 5. Then 10. This is not 11 actually. This is 12. Type of mistake. So after 10, that is 12. P012. So these are all the direct P attainment values of that particular course. See, here we are talking about only one particular course, not overall program. Now you can see the results of PO attainment of the particular course. Here you can see these are all weighted average, the first row consisting of weighted average values. Then the second row, your actual attained values. See, by comparing with weighted average value, let us assume that is your target. Your actual attainment value, whatever you obtain just now. Now you can uh, calculate the gap. How to calculate the gap? Your attend value divided by your weighted average value into 100 percentage. Now you can see the PO1 1.73, but your weighted average is 2.67. It is not reaching. Here also it is not reaching. Here you can see. But here you can see PO5, the weighted average is 1, but your attain value is 1.95. It is uh, achieving more than 100%. That means your mapping level needs to be improved for the next time. Here 1.6 1.08. So whichever the PO not attained your target level, again you have to propose action plan. Like see was how you propose. For example, PO1 1.73. Here, but your weighted average is 2.6 it's not actually 100 percent you can propose some action plan for example uh, to equip additional knowledge of the particular course students encouraged to enroll nptl online courses and appear for certification exam then for example po3 1.3 that po3 related to a particular co that is problem based or exponent based let us assume design based experiments by using some open ended software like that you can propose based on your course requirement your corrective measures okay now you have PO direct assessment now you can calculate PO indirect assessment then overall PO attainment also you can calculate again the distribution weight is so here 80 percent is is for direct assessment 20 percent is used for indirect assessment then overall attainment of PO is combination of 80 20 percentage 80 percentage of direct assessment plus 20 percentage of indirect assessment 0.8 into direct assessment value plus 0.2 into indirect assessment value but for the particular course we can't do this one for all the courses of the particular program after obtaining their attainment values, then only it is possible to do. But individual course wise, you can get direct assessment value only. Here, whatever the values we obtained 1.73 and so on, 1.08, these are all direct attainment values of that particular course 
with a few ovaries with this 80% you can consider then 20% for the indirect attainment now let us see so evaluation of attainment of fevers program level 80% is of direct attainment plus 20% is of indirect attainment if you can convert into formula 0.8 into direct attainment value plus 0.2 into indirect attainment value so now let us see the indirect assessment tools program level these are not applicable to the course individual course individual course already few attainment indirect attainment end semester survey we already considered so here exit survey alumni survey employer survey etc okay at the suppose exit survey end of uh, the four years after graduation or during the last semester you can obtain the feedback on program outcomes even with program specific outcome alumni survey also separately you have to calculate the indirect attainment of all the viewers related to exit survey and alumni survey suppose here student exit survey the sample form po1 po2 all the 12 pos even if we can take psos also then the calculation part is same as co indirect attainment level 1 into number of students attempted plus level 2 into number of students attempted plus level 3 into number of students attempted whole divided by total number of students participated now separately you can calculate this is the exit survey responses and attainment level calculation as part of indirect attainment exit survey po1 number of students attempted with level 1 18 level 2 7 level 3 40 then total participated 65 with this formula 1 into 18 plus 2 into 7 plus 3 into 40 whole divided by 65 you will get 2.34 similarly po2 to 12 then alumni survey also same these are all alumni survey responses so here uh, for example po1 level 1 no one attempted means zero level 2 6 level 3 56 0 into 1 plus 2 into 6 plus 3 into 56 whole divided by 62 you will get 2.68 like that all pos in rate attainment for the alumni survey suppose you are having employer survey also in the similar fashion you can compute then finally you can take the average of all these surveys let us list all the values here exit survey po wise attainment values alumni survey po wise attainment values here i have taken two surveys so here average is 2.34 plus 2.68 here two surveys divided by 2 2.5 so like that all pos indirect attainment values are obtained here then you can consider pvo attainment overall for that what is the data required in your program it is be or me or mba or whatever or mca whatever the program pg or uc for that particular regulation particular academic year particular batch list out all the courses from first year to final year you can include course wise their pvo attainment values these are all direct attainment values suppose in our course formal language and automata theory what are our direct attainment values here you can see for our course these are all direct attainment values 1.73 1.73 and so on for these pvos not all pvos what are the related pvos those you can list out like for all courses after completion of this pvo attainment direct values then only you can calculate overall pvo attainment level of that particular program here you can see for this course whatever the related viewers their direct attainment values are listed here like all courses 
first you have to find layer. Now what you have to do, PO wise you can uh, take the sum of all the courses attainment values. Here see PO1 you are getting 125.79, let us assume. Average direct attainment value, here you can see for example PO1 2.51. So here maybe the data uh, I have taken randomly exactly it won't see 2.51 let us assume whatever that value you can keep here then average direct attainment value you can take average of the PO1 125.79 by total how many courses are participated so you can uh, calculate this value 1.97 you will get it. average direct attainment then 2.91 indirect attainment what is the computation criteria we have considered? 80 percent is direct, 20 percent is indirect. Here you can see for program level PO, 80 percent is of direct attainment plus 20 percent is of indirect attainment. 0.8 into direct attainment value plus 0.2 into indirect attainment value. Using that formula, here you can see PO attainment 0.8 into A1. A1 means direct attainment value plus 0.2 into I1 that is indirect attainment value. For example, here 0.8 into 1.97 plus 0.2 into 2.97. So you will get 2.15. This is the overall PO1 attainment value of that particular program 2.15. Like all POs, the final PO attainment values are obtained. With these values, you can compare with uh, your uh, program level mapping the targets value so here you can set program level targets also in addition to course level so for example your po1 target level is 2.25 but the actual attained value is 2.15 so not 100 percent if you want percentage wise, you can calculate 2.15 by 2.25. Some percentage you will get. Then, this is the PO1 engineering knowledge. You can see which are the courses having the low attainment value. Those courses you can list out. For example, in this PO1, the following courses 305 ES, 401 BS, 5051, having low attainment values. Then what are the actions proposed to improve the attainment levels for the upcoming batches? So further the attainment of this course is improved, maybe uh, so and so to improve to some extent you have mentioned. These are all the observations. For these observations, what are the proposed actions with respect to these courses? Whatever the courses you mentioned with low attainment value. Suppose additional cases to be taken in so on so course, more problems to be taught during tutorial hours, practical approach of teaching programming if it is a practical linked course, more problems for practice if it is problematic. Like that depends on the course requirement. You can propose action taken. Then these actions should be implemented in the upcoming batches. The target level should be increased. Whenever we have done properly all these measures implemented, automatically that will be improved. If not, even after uh, doing all these measures, there is no improvement means again you can see the gap why that was happened. So uh, you can propose some more critical measures like that. So, like that, PO wise, based on the results of POs. We have to propose action taken based on the observation. This this is useful for continuous improvement. For example, PO6, the target is 1.5, but you achieved more. Even after achieving higher well value, some of the courses having low attainment, even 100% achievement also. Some courses may having low or marginal. For those courses, also propose some action taken, action plan. Here, here also you can see target level is achieved still so and so course having low attainment. You have to propose some action. 
like that all pivots the same process you can repeat for program specific outcomes also for easy programs you are having specific outcomes for pg programs generally you don't have specific outcomes yeah that is the process of computing pivot attainment overall pivot attainment at program level so here finally coming to the conclusion what we discussed we started with the mapping of PO with the PO, then uh, formation of articulation matrix with the justification, then the data required for computation of CO attainment and PO attainment, then CO attainment uh, assessment tools and their target levels and their weightages with the direct attainment perspective, indirect attainment perspective, then uh, PO attainment assessment process and their tools again direct attainment indirect attainment perspective then finally one particular course how to calculate the overall CO attainment then one particular course how to calculate PO attainment level then for a particular program by considering all the courses offer, offering in that program how to calculate the overall PO attainment levels then based on the results of POs, the action taken for continuous improvement. These are the various uh, topics what we covered.